All right, gang, Jeremy Hazel here for Seven Season Studios, and this is a lesson from our brand new course, Affinity Designer, How to Do Artistic Text and Font in Affinity Designer. So if you like this lesson and you want to learn more about Affinity Designer, go ahead and check out the link below for an exclusive offer for our YouTube folks. Other than that, let's go ahead and get into here and start rolling those credits. All right, let's create something. All right, folks, welcome back. So this is where we left it last time. We had the brown dog on the page and we had our character panel undocked. So now I wanna introduce you to the three-step process that I use in order to get my text straight. So it's a little bit counterintuitive to the way that these adjustments are set up. The very first adjustment, folks, and the three-step process is on the screen. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna adjust the tracking. Now, as we said before, tracking affects readability. So if you move this to negative 100, uh, let's go ahead and select our text, huh? that would help. Notice how it gets super jumbled up. So we're gonna go ahead, I like to adjust mine at about a negative 15, okay? Gives me ample room between these. So now, once I've got the tracking set, now I have to adjust my leading. So again, with both of them selected, I can come up here and I can adjust the leading until I'm happy with it. And again, this is all about readability. Depending on what you're doing, if you're doing like a playbill, which we'll do a little bit later in the course, you may want very subtle leading. If you're looking at a larger poster in which you want to get across a message, you might have larger leading. So step one, tracking. Step two, leading. Step three is going to be kerning. Now you're going, okay, what is kerning? Kerning is a fancy $7 word way of saying spacing between letters. And kerning is found right here. Now you see how we've got both words selected? If I go to my kerning options, it's all grayed out. That's because kerning only works when you have a space between letters. Now, this is where we're gonna bring in these areas here. Kerning is an art form, folks. It is not perfect, and I'll guarantee you that it is a skill that you will just have to develop, and by no means am I perfect at it. So here's some general guidelines that you might find. In areas where there are two hard lines, let's say there's an L and an H, you would have the maximum space for kerning. So I bring this over, and you'll see here, if I'm gonna kern using these templates, I'll grab the area in between these letters, and I will then turn up the kerning until there's space in between them, okay? So if you have solid to solid or straight line to straight line, there's a maximum amount of kerning allowed. Now, the yellow template here applies where you have, say, a round shape like this O and this L. It's subtly a little bit smaller in space. So here, if I was to adjust this kerning, I might then choose this space and I would then adjust this kerning, but not as much as I would the space between the L and the H. And then lastly, where you have two round spaces, you want the least amount of space. So I would take the template over to here where I have two round items and then my text tool selected, I would select my kerning and I would hand kern it until I got to here. So this might be, I'll go ahead and move these templates over here, an effectively kerned piece of text. So you would have to absolutely do your kerning by hand and the reason is, and now I'm gonna bring in this triangle, in areas where there are two round shapes, like between this O and G, 
you'll see that the eye puts a little bit of this triangular funnel shape into the text. Whereas between these two areas, the eye is pulled in an up and down direction. Okay? So kerning is the last step. In order to kern effectively, have your tracking set, have your space between your text set, which means you're leading, have your font set because the font will make a difference and then you go ahead and kern. Now, one of the best resources that I have for you is a site called Kern Me. This is a fun little game here. So get started, drag the E inside of here. And this is really cool now. What they've done here, it's actually super cool. They've taken four letters and you'll see here that you're supposed to hand kern the distance so that you're almost guessing at how wide this should be. So you take your best shot at hand kerning all the letters. So this is the A and the V. And then once you're good, you go ahead and hit compare. And then it will tell you on a scale of one to 100 how effectively you did it in terms of this line being where it needs to be. And the words get progressively harder. So notice you can't adjust the T or the E. That, my friends, is that tracking. This is kerning. So I'm going to adjust here. And I've got two words over here. So I'd say I'm probably right about there. I was way off, right? So again, this is an art form. This is certainly not easy to do. So it's one of those things that you definitely want to keep practicing. And this is a good way to make sure that you are quasi in the ballpark. So again, I am not great at it. I'd say on a scale of one to 10, I'm at about an eight or a nine overall. You can see I was slightly off on that L. All right, so that's a little bit about kerning. And I want you to really get this three-step process down. First, we track. Then we adjust our leading. Then we kern until we get good readability in our text. And in order to complete the process, you need to make sure your fonts are finalized and your structure is right. All right, folks, let's go ahead and get into a challenge here, and we'll see you in the next one.